Hey now everybody, Jamie here, and I'm going to do a little bit different of a review for you today. I'm not going to focus on any particular board game, but I'm going to focus on the surface that we play these games on. Now this table that I'm sitting at right now is called a Game Topper. And what is a Game Topper? Well, a Game Topper is basically your standard issue, high quality board gaming table, with one exception. This thing doesn't have any legs. And why would you want a game table with no legs? Well, the purpose of this thing is to be a lower cost alternative to a full-sized regular board gaming table. It's meant to be put on top of another table. It's also portable, it's storable, you, you put it in the closet, you get it out, you put it together, you put it on your dining room table, a folding table, your ottoman on the floor, whatever. It's also portable in that you can throw it in your trunk, take it to your buddy's house, take it to a game convention, whatever. All right, well, let's step back, take a closer look at all the options and features that this thing has, and see if it would be a right fit for you. All right, so here's the table that I normally game on. It's a pretty chunky dining room table. Currently, it is six feet by three and a half feet. Now I'm gonna assemble the game topper on top of this table. It comes in two halves and you plop it down on the table. And you push them together. There are these interlocking wood tabs that help you guide it into place. Then you slide these blocks into place and you turn the screws and that's going to lock the two pieces together. Then you roll out your giant neoprene mat and you kind of shimmy it around and make sure that it's fitting in there snugly. And that's it, you're done, you're all set up and ready to play. So one thing I wanna point out before we go any further is there are a couple of differences here than the one that you might get. Mine is an earlier version and there's some changes that are gonna be made here. Uh, first, the floor of the playing surface, mine is this bright white colored wood. The ones that are gonna ship to people are gonna be a dark colored wood. And also, more importantly, I believe, the blocks with the screws on it that you slide into place, the ones that I have have wooden blocks and the screws are metal. In the updated version, the block is going to be made of aluminum, which is better than wood, and the screws are going to be metal with a plastic head on them. Now we also have some accessories here, and it's most of the same kind of stuff that you would see on a normal game table. We have cup holders that you can put your beer in there so you don't spill it all over your game table. Also, there's wine goblet holders uh, for your more refined gamers. And also, the cup holders have this little cork plate that's got wood on the other side that can seat right over top of it so you can have a little shelf if you wish. Also, there is a double-sized cup holder with the double-sized cork tray as well here. And all of these have this little locking mechanism. You jam it into the, the track and they kind of lock themselves into it. Just don't bump it real hard from below or it'll not work like you expect. And one little cool feature that I noticed that the Game Topper does have is around the perimeter of the play area, there's a little groove there where you can stick your cards in there. If you wanna, if you wanna hold your cards on the table as opposed to in your hand, you can do it. And I thought that was a really cool touch. It doesn't need to be there, but they threw it in anyway, and I thought that was cool. Okay, so what do I think about all of this stuff? First off, I was kind of worried about this product. I mean, it comes in two halves. Uh, it felt like it might be rickety. Well, when I did get it home and I set it up, I was hugely surprised and I was I was completely wrong. This thing is solid as a rock. Really, this thing, when you put these screws together and it holds together tightly, it's solid. It really is solid. Now, in this video up to this point, I've had this on a giant chunky trestle table that's in and of itself solid as, as the Rock of Gibraltar. So it's go not going anywhere. Really, the table is what's going to dictate how solid this thing is. And now I'm going to show you the game topper moved over to a six by three folding table that I just bought at Walmart. Now, this thing is still solid. It really is the table that matters. If the table underneath is solid enough to support it, it's going to work great. 
Now, one of the main reasons that it is solid is because on the underside, you have these rubber strips that hold this thing into place. It keeps it from slipping around on the table, and it works equally well on the big chunky trestle table as it does on the folding table that I got at Walmart. All right, so let's go into the fact that it's two halves. I mentioned that I was skeptical of it at first, and it turned out to be great that it's in two halves. It's awesome. It is awesome that you can break this thing down. You can put it in your closet. You can put it in your trunk or whatever. And also in the Kickstarter, they're going to have carrying cases that you can you know, slide these into those canvas bags and kind of carry it. It's still going to be a little heavy, I would imagine, but it's a portable option. That's great. The only negative I have about it, of course, is that the the there's a crack down the center of it. I mean, you can see that there's the there's the where they fit together. This is only an aesthetic thing. And initially I was like, I don't really dig that as much as having it solid. But after a while, I stopped noticing it. So really, that's an, an aesthetic decision. Do you care about that or not? Uh, I think that the portability and the storability of this thing kind of outweighs that for me personally. But so you're just going to have to decide if that matters to you ultimately. Now, another thing that I was concerned about, and it completely went away when I got mine, is the recessed playing surface. I don't like gaming at a craps table. That's awful. I don't like reaching down in on a game table to get my stuff. This one has the recessed surface, but it's only a little bit. It's just enough so that it doesn't feel intrusive, but it also makes sure that your dice don't hit the floor every five minutes. I really like the the very lightly recessed surface of, of the game's topper. I think it really is cool for my personal taste. Now, another thing that you're going to have to pay attention to when you're deciding if this is right for you is the fact that it sits on top of another table. So that means it's going to sit higher than a normal table will. Now, I'm a weird case because of my big chunky trestle table. My table actually sits up a little higher than normal already. So this thing sits actually very high for me. Now, there are some good aspects of it. I feel comfortable sitting up straight. I kind of like, it feels like I'm sitting in a bar almost, and I can, I'm closer to my player board. It feels comfortable sitting at it. But the opposite of that is now I can't reach across the table quite as well. And I also can't see everything perfectly across the table because it's closer to eye level and you have to, I have to stand up a little bit sometimes. Now, this isn't going to be a bad thing in every case on the folding table from Walmart it still sits up a little higher and those problems still persist, but very, very slightly in comparison to my trestle table. So this is again, something that you have to ask yourself, is that going to bother you? Sitting up higher, is that a problem for you or is it actually a bonus for you? There are merits on both sides. Now, the last feature I wanna bring up is the neoprene mat. This is amazing. I am in love with neoprene. I love it as a gaming surface, much better than a casino felt. Now, what makes this cool is that you can change out to any colors that you want, any designs that you want, and there are so many options going forward that you can use this for. Like you can get a clear surface that will handle uh, whiteboard markers. So when you're role playing, you can have all sorts of maps and things underneath and you're marking them up. Fantastic. I, I would love to see that with this. You can get terrain style neoprene mats so you can play miniatures games on it or just down to the point of changing the color. You want red one day, you got red. You got blue one day, you got blue. It's just a neat, a neat feature. And neoprene is an amazing surface to play on. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the sizes of the game toppers. Now, I have a model called the Watson. It's 67 inches by 45 inches wide outside. And there is a larger version that's 79 inches by 43 inches. The reason I got the Watson is because it has an extra two inches of width. I'm using mine for shooting video reviews and things, so the extra width really helps me. So throughout this video, you probably saw part of my table underneath hanging out. It's because I got the shorter version and I don't have a table in my house that actually is small enough to fit underneath it properly. So that is most definitely something you wanna pay attention to. You have to make sure you have a table that actually fits this thing or that you can get one that fits this thing. And one thing you have to pay attention to that I have a little bit of an issue with for my personal gaming 
is you really can't play proper miniatures games on this table. I'm talking Warhammer 40,000, War Machine, those kinds of things. Because you have to pay attention to the, the playable area. My table, the Watson, is 60 playable inches by 38 playable inches. And really, to play a proper game of 40K, you need six feet by four feet of playable space. The six feet isn't as big a deal, but the four feet is huge because you need that space between each player to, for deployment zones and all that other stuff. None of the models really are fit for a full-on miniatures game. Now, they did say that they're looking into options for larger sizes. I'm not sure that it's initially going to be available, but in the future it will. So it's something that I'm concerned about myself. And of course, those gigantic table hog games like Twilight Imperium 4 and others like that, you might have a tiny bit of trouble with the board and your play area and all your pieces and that kind of stuff. So you want to pay attention to that. What kind of gamer are you and is this going to be enough for you at this time? All right. Well, that's just about everything I have to say about the Game Topper. Really, in summary, this is a product that you just have to look at all the specifications and decide if it is right for your gaming style. Is it right for all the games that you want to play? Is it right for the lifestyle that you live when it comes to gaming? And other than that, really, you don't have to worry about construction. You don't have to worry about quality because this thing exceeds most game tables out there. This isn't IKEA garbage that you're getting here. This is high quality, serious, high quality furniture that you're buying here. And the price is right. I'm not going to mention the price yet because they're putting this on Kickstarter and they might change the prices and I don't want to get stuck saying the wrong thing. So when it goes on Kickstarter, you can see the price. But, but let me tell you, it's going to be less, far less than just about every game table that's out there. And some that are similar in price aren't as good a quality. I can guarantee you that. So this, this product gets the thumbs up for me. I really, really do like it. Just make sure that it's right for you before you invest. Well, all right, thanks very much everybody for checking out my review of the Game Topper. I hope it was helpful and I hope that it uh, gives you some things to think about when you're deciding if it's something you wanna invest in. And also, if you would, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're putting up video reviews of typically board games. If you're into board games, miniatures games, card games, role-playing games, also check out our audio podcast, The Secret Cabal Gaming Podcast. You can find that at thesecretcabal.com or on iTunes. And until next time, have a good one.